the Game Boy Pocket. Arguably the most well-designed Game Boy aesthetically, and also the first Game Boy Nintendo gave us a license to conceal and carry. Let's get this bread. Ah, the Game Boy Pocket. I always love the way this one looked. It's so skinny and sleek. But I did think it was always kind of weird that he used AAA batteries over the traditional AA's that all the other Game Boys used. I haven't really modded a lot of these, mostly because I wasn't a huge fan of doing the bivert backlighting to the screens. But now, since Funny Playing has introduced the new IPS kits for the Game Boy Pocket, I figured it'd be the perfect time to throw one of those into one of these bad boys and also show you guys how to add in a USB-C rechargeable battery. And stick around to the end of the video where I'll tell you how you can win a custom modded Game Boy Pocket just like this one. All right guys, this is pretty much everything we're going to need for this build. And I'll get to these parts as we get to them. So for now, we have our donor Game Boy Pocket right here and we're going to be putting it in this new black Game Boy Pocket shell that I got. And I've actually never had a shell like this. This shell's pretty neat. It's, uh, it's like really soft plastic. It's almost like a soft rubber. And um, I got it in recently and I thought it'd be cool to do a build with it. So. We're going to use that. So let me get all this stuff out of the way and we'll go ahead and start by taking this apart. All right, so I have this clear Game Boy Pocket here and we're basically just going to be taking the board out of this. So it's typical Game Boy, six screws. Go ahead and take those out. And then it's three screws on the board. There's one, two, and three. All right, so unlatch the screen. Hold on to the ribbon, pop right out. All right, the only thing we're going to be using from this is the membranes and the board itself. So we'll go ahead and set the old shell to the side. All right, so we have our board. What we're going to be doing is removing the battery contacts here and this DC in jack right here because that is where we're actually going to put the USB-C charging board. What we're gonna end up doing is drilling out this part right here, this little hole, and that's where it's going to fit. So the first thing we need to do for that is we need to remove these battery contacts and we have to remove this DC in jack. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux to all five of the contact points. As you get it kind of loose, you should be able to wiggle it out. doesn't matter if you destroy it because we're not using it at all. But you do want to make sure not to destroy the board. All right, once you get it out there, it should look something like this. Now we have to solder a wire connecting these pins right here. It's the top left and right pin. So end up looking like that. The wire connecting the two points. All right, so now that that's done, the only thing left we have to do on the board is remove the contacts and solder and the diode and the wires. Now you can go over here and unsolder the contacts if you want, but you don't need to do that. I usually just break them off like this because it's fun to do and it does the exact same thing and it's easier. Just flex them back and forth. This is the negative, this is the positive. The dial is gonna go black side down on the positive side. Then we're gonna solder a wire to that, and then we're gonna solder a wire to the negative, and then we're done with the board for now. So let's take a decent amount of wire. Um, I'd say probably like, I don't know, like four, four or five inches. We'll cut it down later. Some flux on both of the contacts. Take our solder and then grab the diode, 
you cut the diode down. I don't know. It's about that size. That size is good for the diode. All right. Let's go ahead and add some solder to these contacts. Smoky. There's the positive. So like I said, this diode has a black part. That part is what you want to be down towards the contact. All right, so now that's good. We'll solder on both the ends of those wires. So the red one we're gonna do for positive, and that's going to solder right at the end of this diode here. And what the diode does is it drops the 3.7 volts of the LiPo battery down to three volts. I'm sure to use a decent amount of solder on these joints. I usually tug on it a little which is probably stupid, but I do that just to make sure like it's not gonna break while it's in there. All right, so I kind of tuck that in like that. Just a little bit of Kapton tape on the diode and the wire. And then just solder on the negative wire and we can move on to working on the charging boards. Okay, for the charging boards, we are using this, just this typical micro USB charging board because we're not going to be using the micro USB. We are going to be wiring it to this little USB-C breakout board. They call it a female socket connector, so we'll call it that too. Okay, the female socket connector is basically going to wire to the front points of this charging board, and then you can put this wherever you want on the Game Boy, plug it in, sends the power to this board, power distributes it to the battery, and it charges it. So we're not going to need this port here. Um, you can leave it on, but like it doesn't matter but I usually cut it off just to like save a little bit of space since the pocket's so small. So just want to be careful around the edges, but I usually just kind of cut it off, kind of clip it at the edge there and clip it at the edge over here. And if it's not flexing up, you just keep cutting around the edges of it. These things are pretty cheap. So if you break it, it's, not the biggest deal, but. You can unsolder it too, probably, but you know, you saw what I did with the board. I just broke the contacts off. We love breaking stuff. All right. And this is nice too, because it will let you know when it's done charging and stuff like that too. So as for this part, so where we're going to be soldering it is there's a V on this side where it has the like cutout squiggly top there's a V and that's going to go to the positive side on this board and then there's this part at the very end here that is going to be your negative. V, positive, end part here, negative, okay? So the way we're going to do it is we're going to, because of the way it sits in the shell, this is gonna sit right here. And then the wire actually has to go this way and then wrap around the board like that and then go up through the battery door, so. Something like that should look good. So the way that this sits inside of the shell right here. We don't need all of this extra part of the board right here, so you can actually cut off the very ends of it. All right, so now that we have all of our boards prepped and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the shell. So, like I said, what we're going to be doing is opening up this DC in jack hole right here so that it will fit this USB-C port inside of it. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and cut the battery compartment out so that our little 600 milliamp battery will fit inside of it. 
All right, so the first thing we gotta do is remove these contacts on the right side of the back. They usually just come right up. Toss those, we're not gonna need those. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this side. So, this side right here of the shell on the inside of the battery door. You can go ahead and snip that with your flush cutters. That's gonna all come out. So, the goal of this is to remove the entire battery compartment without cutting the screw holes right here. You wanna make sure that you don't cut into the screw holes or the shell will not close right. So you can draw it out if you need to with a marker, but it's pretty straightforward. You just go underneath the side right here, the back, and then we just cut out that part right here. So once you get that part done, you can just snip the rest out. So let's go ahead and do that. There, will, there may be some excess plastic on the side, but you can pick that out most of the time. All right, so we're almost done. We have our battery compartment cut out. So the next thing that we need to do is widen up this hole right here so that we can fit this USB-C port inside of it. So in order to do that, all we're going to have to do is file down this little nub right here, very small, on the back half of the shell. And for the front half of the shell is what we're going to focus on. The first thing we need to do is remove all four of these pegs. After we remove those, we're going to kind of do a rough sketch of how big we need the hole to actually be. And then we're going to go ahead and drill it out with this rotary tool and then fine tune it with a little file. So let's go ahead and start with those little legs. These legs are there to hold the DC and jack in place. But since we removed it, we will not be needing them anymore. They're just kind of in the way. So, looks like that, nice and flat. I usually just kind of eyeball this, kind of hold it in place, right about where it needs to be. So I didn't mention this, but we want to go this way. We don't really want to widen the hole towards the headphone jack because we want to keep it as far away from the headphone jack as we can, but still keep it looking clean. Because if you get it too close to the headphone jack, it can kind of mess with the audio sometimes if you get hot glue on that. So we're going to try to avoid doing that. I'm just going to draw a little line right here. There we go. That's good enough. So we're going to very carefully just drill along that. I like to put the shell back together just so it's like a little bit more to hold on to. All right, that looks pretty decent, decently big enough. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this extra excess off. So we're not gonna need that. Okay, so grab a little spade file. Start filing it down. Grab the round one. Yeah, that's how you want it. You want it to be really tight while you're working on it. Like to the point where it doesn't fit, like you're having to force it in because then you can really slowly file away really small amounts and get it to fit perfectly. And that's what you want. You want it to fit really tightly. It looked like it was supposed to be there. That's it. 
That's it. All right, we got it. If you do it right, it'll kind of pop right in. Just like that. It'll almost wrap around it a little bit. Looks really good. Let's go ahead and do a test fit of the board really quick. Make sure the headphone jack's not getting in the way. You see how these are gonna kind of wrap up front like that. And that sets in perfectly. Look at that, nice and flush. Wow, it looks great. Okay, next step, you're gonna wanna grab a little USB-C charging cable because this will help you hold it in place while you glue it. So go ahead and just plug it in like you normally would. And go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on the sides and around the back a little bit. I try not to glue on the headphone jack side just because, like I said, it can kind of mess with it sometimes. But um, as you can see, the our charging board is pushing right up against the start and select. So that's the problem that you can face with some of the other Game Boys is it, it, if you don't get enough glue on it, you push the charger in and it pushes the USB board in. But the, because the start and select is right here, that's not going to happen. And then because of the way the board is wedged in there, you can't pull it out. So this board actually works really well. All right, now that that's nice and dry and the glue's had some time to harden up, let's go ahead and place our finger on top of it as if our finger was the Game Boy Pocket board and go ahead and pull the charger out. Should come right out. Shouldn't feel the board move much. Good to go. Oh yeah, I don't even need to hold it. That's solid. Okay, so now we're on the home stretch. We got this board done. This is done. This is ready to be installed. The only thing we have to do now is install a new funny playing IPS screen into it. These screens are really awesome. Like I said, I, I never was a huge fan of doing the biverting. Uh, it was kind of a pain and I just didn't, I knew it, it was all right. It looked all right. I just didn't, wasn't crazy about it because everything else was looking better to me anyways. Um, anyways, now that these are out, we're gonna go ahead and install this in here. So. You've probably seen videos on this, but we'll do a quick run through on how it's done. All you have to do is remove all this excess plastic around the edges, a little bit on the edge of this screw post right here, and then it kind of just drops right in. It's, uh, it's not too bad. First off, we got to remove all that. You can do this completely with flush cutters too. A little trick when doing it with flush cutters though is you don't want to snip it like parallel. You want to kind of go at an angle and like, like slice the plastic off. It comes off a lot easier when you do it like that instead of like chomping at it. You can go ahead and file that if you want to, but I swear you don't need to. Cause you're putting the 3M stuff over it anyways. You don't, you don't gotta do it. This is the part where it is a little more useful to use a knife like this. So they tell you to remove all this 3M backing and kind of like stick this there, but I usually don't do that. Uh, you can do that if you want, but you don't really need to. I just take off like half of it. Like, let's see, um, I'll do the strip. I'll just do the top and the bottom. So we want to make sure we're getting it all the way to the left. 
before we stick it down. There we go. After you get it in, it should look something like that. The bottom corner on the right rests on the D-pad right here. Plug in the ribbon cable. Clicks right in like that. Now we're ready to start actually putting the Game Boy back together. I decided to go with some red buttons for this build. I thought it would look pretty sweet. So grab the membranes, grab your board, go ahead and put a little bit of Kapton tape onto the back pins. So now we are ready to lay the board in. So go ahead and make sure these wires are not in the way of the headphone jack. Lay your board in like that. Set it down. Make sure not to touch the screen. Check on how everything, there, there is usually just enough gap right here so these wires can go through. See that? All right, now the board's in, feels pretty solid. Check your buttons, make sure those feel normal. Let's go ahead and make sure that the clip is up. Go ahead and slide the ribbon cable in. All right, we got it in. So the next step before we get on to soldering in the battery is we have to solder these two wires for the ribbon cable. Go ahead and solder in the touch. Quick tap, good. Okay, so this wire solders to this first lead on the left of the switch. So I'm gonna add a little solder to that switch contact, good. Gonna go ahead and solder in the wire, good. Let's move on to finishing up, soldering in the battery, and then putting it back together. We got our board, we got our battery, we got our charging board. Let's go ahead and solder in the wires from the board to the charging board first. So, the black one, which is the negative one, is going to go to the minus out on your charging board. So, minus out is negative, plus out is positive. Go ahead and set it there. Quick tap, good. Same with the other one. Quick tap. Good. Now, it's the same sides for the battery. Let me make sure before you solder the battery in, make sure that your switch is off. So from the back side, it should be to the right. That's off, you wanna make sure you do that. Solder that. Good. All right, now, moment of truth. Go ahead and test it right there. And it looks good. It looks real good. Make sure our touch sensor's working. Touch sensor's working. Everything's good. All right, hold, goes back, change to pixel mode. Yep, everything's working, all right. So now all we have to do, like I said, is solder the charging board wires into the top of the board right here. Let's cut them right about there. I like to make them a little bit longer. Quick math, black goes to minus, red goes to plus, Oh, 
All right. So now we're good. Let's go ahead and put our power switch in and screw it all back together. So for this, it actually helps if you cut a little V-shaped divot into the bottom. Just like that. Little V-shape right there. And that will help give the wires somewhere to go. So go ahead and feed these up through here. Lower that down. I'm gonna make sure your wires are not getting in the way of where the screw post will go. That looks good. Go ahead and squish it. You'll feel it if it's resisting. And this one feels good. The wires that are coming from the USB-C board to the charging board here, those are the ones that are gonna fit in that little divot we just cut out. Now, once you got that all screwed together, go ahead and take the battery. And we are going to make sure that it is not tangled too much. So it should sit kind of like this. You're going to tuck the battery underneath the charging board. The charging board is going to sit right there. The battery literally pops in like it fits perfectly. That sits like that. Okay. If you did everything correctly, the battery and the charging board should fit perfectly flush right in there. Your battery door should set right down, click in, be completely flat, not bulge whatsoever. Go ahead and test it one more time. It's really good. You sure the touch sensor's working again? Oh yeah. So now that we have it all together, let's do a quick test of the charging. So what I did so that the light from this charging board can shine through and let you know red charging, blue finish charging, is I cut a little slit right here on the edge of the latch where it clamps down. So now when it's closed, I plug it in. Now with that cut out, you can see right there, and then it'll go blue once it's done charging. So there you have it, a USB-C rechargeable battery modded Game Boy Pocket. So I was going to have the entries for the giveaway in the comment section of this video, but I decided I didn't want to drown out other people who might have actual questions about the mod itself. So tomorrow I'll be uploading a new video where you can enter to win a Game Boy just like this one, or even this one, or this one. They're all rechargeable via USB-C. This one's like a DMG style. I got like a custom label. I gotta flex that real quick. So be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. I appreciate you guys. Give the video a like if you liked it. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you for watching.